Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Now this time I'm going to speak about Brahma Vihara meditation, that is the divine abidings. There are four, and the uh, first three particularly are variations on a theme. These are Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Upeka. First uh, order of business, I think, is to define the terms. Metta is most commonly translated as loving kindness. I think in some ways that's an unfortunate translation. I think it gives people a kind of uh, misperception. It would be better translated something like benevolence. The feeling is one of wishing well to others. And this uh, is expressed as may this being or may all beings be well and happy. May good things come for them. So it's important to understand at the outset that this does not necessarily mean you approve of the being or their behavior or that you like them in the sense of wanting to be close to them. It just means may they be well and happy. And we can wish and we should wish metta towards things like scorpions and and poison snakes but that doesn't mean we want to cuddle them you know it's it's not the it's not that it's just may they be well and happy in their little scorpion existence but over there not not anywhere near me karuna the next one is compassion which is not a bad translation but it does have one misleading aspect in that the English word compassion comes from Latin roots, meaning to suffer with. And uh, karuna is the wish that beings not suffer. May this being or all beings be released from suffering. But it does not mean that we pick up their suffering. If you feel sad, then you're not doing karuna correctly. You're, you've missed the, the point slightly. It should not cause you to suffer as well. If you just think about it, if you're suffering vicariously because other beings are suffering, then you're adding to the sum total of suffering in the universe. So that's not a desirable outcome. Mudita is sympathetic joy. It means it's kind of the uh, the opposite of karuna, where karuna we wish beings not to suffer. With mudita, we wish beings continue to enjoy whatever happiness they have found. For the great majority of beings in samsara, their experience will be a mix of pleasure and pain, of happiness and suffering. And here we focus on whatever happiness they have found. And it doesn't have to be any kind of exalted or spiritual happiness, just ordinary mundane happiness. The example given in the Vasudhimaga is very mundane. It's uh, feeling mudita when you see somebody riding on a fancy elephant. So the, these first three are variations on a theme. Metta is kind of the general one. And then Karuna focuses on suffering and Mudita on happiness. Upeka is different. It stands alone. There's no aspiration associated with it. The, with the other ones, we're, we have a wish or an aspiration associated with it. Opeka is just recognizing that aspect of beings which is the same, which is equal. In the vast number of beings in existence, 
everyone is in some way unique and no two are exactly the same. And we can point to all kinds of differences between beings, but there is some aspect that is the same. And the uh, classic way of expressing this is this being and all beings are subject to their kama. They exist determined by their kama and so forth. So all of us are caught in the, this uh, matrix of, of karma, whether we're experiencing a happy existence or a miserable one it's a result of kama so that's basically defining the terms of the four brahma viharas now developing them as a meditation which is what i want to focus on i'll begin speaking about metta which is the most general one and then just we can briefly apply the same principles to the other first two opeka again is quite different. There are different ways of developing metta as a meditation, and there are many, many different approaches. We can generalize to some degree into two. There is the method of extending metta to individuals, which is a more focused and uh, has a more uh, potential for developing deep samadhi. And there's the method that's uh, called general pervasion, where we extend metta out into the universe in a general way. And this has its own different benefits. It's very brightening and uplifting to the mind. In general, metta is a very good as a... Um, antidote to uh, dark states of mind, particularly anger or ill will. If one's falling into those states, it's a good antidote to do metta meditation. So in either approach, you can begin by centering your consciousness at the heart center in the middle of the chest. Take a few breaths with your consciousness centered there until you feel established at that point and then bring up the aspiration which is may i be well and happy this is a very important crucial first step you have to have metta or the other brahma viharas established towards yourself first if you don't it's not, if you don't feel this metta towards yourself, it's impossible to extend it in a genuine way to anyone else. And if you do establish it in a strong, genuine, authentic way towards yourself, it's impossible to, to stop there because your own person is too small a vehicle to hold this expansive state. You know, so you will naturally extend it outwards. So it's a very critical first step. May I be well and happy. And you can just try and really arouse that, uh, that wish or that aspiration. Now, uh, before I go on with the technique, I'll, I want to make another point. There, is, uh, there are different opinions as to what constitutes the actual object or nimitta of uh, Brahma Vihara meditation. My own view is that it, it should be the, the feeling. It's an emotional or um, you know, internal state of, of metta is something very specific and uh, definite. You have this warm feeling of well-wishing, of benevolence. And it's that feeling that I think is the proper object of the meditation. And anything you do, any method you use to rouse that feeling is correct. And there are different emphasis. Some people put more emphasis on um, a repetition of the phrases. May, may I be well and happy. May all beings be well and happy. Other persons like to do a visualization associated with this but however you 
whatever secondary methods you use to get it going, it's that feeling that I would argue is the genuine object. So having aroused metta towards yourself, uh, let's start with uh, talking about the uh, metta extended to individuals. There's a traditional list that you go through as uh, enumerated in the Sudimaga. You begin with yourself, then you next extend it to someone you regard as a teacher. May this person be well and happy. Then you extend it to your parents, if they are still alive. Then you extend it to a dear friend. Then to a neutral person, someone that you can put a name and a face to, but you don't feel strongly about them one way or the other. They're just, you know, an acquaintance or a work colleague, you know, someone that you know you can identify, but you don't have feelings about them. And then the uh, the last one, the most difficult, is the enemy, someone that pushes your buttons, someone who causes you trouble or rubs you the wrong way. Extend it to to that person. And the um, perfection of the meditation is said to be, it's called breaking down the barriers. It's said to be when you have the same degree of feeling towards each individual in the list. And there's no difference in the quality or intensity of the metta towards yourself, the dear friend, and the enemy. They're all, all uh, loved to the same degree. Now you can use visualization with this if you if you have a facility for that. Imagining the person's face or even imagining the whole person sitting opposite of you. However, you know, however, whatever degree of visualization you want to include. There's also a caution here to avoid going astray with the meditation. There are a couple of categories of persons you should not select for your list. One are dead people. You don't extend metta towards the dead because if they happen to be in the ghost realm, you'll attract them to hang around and it doesn't help them. They're not going to be moving on. If you want to help people in the ghost realm, you should transfer merit to them, but don't extend metta to them. So only living persons. And the second category is you should avoid any individual who has the gender and age characteristics that might cause sexual desire to arise in you because it can easily shift. Metta can easily shift into sensual desire if you're not careful. So you avoid those, any, any individual that might arouse lust in you. You don't include them. And uh, use the same method for karuna and mudita, but the, only the aspiration is changed. For karuna, it's may this being be released from suffering. And with mudita, it's may this being continue to enjoy happiness. You know? And you, you focus on those aspects of their lives. You know? With the karuna, you think of ways in which that being is suffering, whether physically or emotionally, however, and wish that they be released from that. With Medita, you think of their successes and may they continue to enjoy that happiness. So that's um, basically how you do it in the focused way of, of extending it to individuals. To practice general pervasion, you again start the same way with yourself and then you extend outwards in increasing circles. And visualization is, is a very useful here. It goes well with this, this type of practice. You, you extend the, uh, the metta to all the beings in the immediate area. Like if you were meditating in a, in a group, you would start with, the, after yourself, you would start with all the other yogis in the group. May all these beings here be well and happy. Then you keep extending it outwards into 
greater circles, this, this local area, may all the beings be well and happy, including animals and insects and invisible beings like Dewas, may all these beings be well and happy. And you keep extending it outwards in uh, all directions until you encompass the whole earth. And then you go further and extend it to the uh, infinity of space. So from your heart center, you're radiating metta. And a lot of people like to do it this way of visualizing rays emanating from your heart and extending out into space. And the infinitude of unknown beings that dwell in all directions. You know? And you can take your time with this and go step by step, gradually extending the circles. You can find uh, perhaps that there's a couple of, at least a couple of um, places where you can sort of rest. It's a kind of a plateau, a natural place. One is when you, the whole continent, like if we're here living in North America, you think of going to the, the, the one, one text says the limits of ocean sea. So you think, you know, this whole continent of North America, may all beings be well and happy. It's a kind of a natural stopping point. And then the next one would be the whole earth, you know, and include the oceans, all the beings in the ocean. And there's many, many millions of beings, billions, trillions of little beings that live in the ocean. And all the animals and humans that live on the different continents and any dewas or petas even that exist. May, may all these beings be well and happy. And then expand it out into uh, infinity of space. And a final point with this method, that, that is the kind of the last stopping point, is, and this is the mature meditation, the complete meditation, is sitting there radiating to infinity, filling all of space with your metta. Uh, when you want to end the meditation, I would recommend not just breaking it off suddenly at that point, but collapsing it back in stages, which you can do more quickly. You can go through the stages more quickly, but bring it back to, you know, the earth, this continent, this local area, this room, myself. And end with a few breaths at your, at your heart center, wishing well for yourself so that you end the meditation, you know, grounded. You don't break the meditation off and your consciousness is somewhere off in the Pegasus galaxy. You keep it, uh, you bring it back down to the, to the, to the earth. And the same way is done with Karuna and Mudita. Now, just to say a few words about Upeka, the fourth one. The Vasudhi Maga treats it as kind of like it's a graduate course. Vasudhi Maga actually recommends that um, you don't even try to practice Upeka until you've mastered one of the others. That's probably a bit extreme, I mean, you can, but it is certainly on a different plane than the other three. It transcends the other three because there's no aspiration, to, to, so you're completely at peace with what is. And um, <laughs> one way of doing it is to focus on individual beings and just recognize this being too is subject to their kama. This being too is just experiencing their kama. Or extending it to space, you have the contemplation all the beings in the universe exist according to their kama. Their suffering and their happiness is all a result of their kama. So you're not wishing to change anything with this meditation. You're just recognizing all beings as turning in the up and down in the wheel of kama. Kind of see the whole universe as a big churning. Uh, this is an, the name of samsara. It means uh, wandering in circles. Samsareti is the verb, meaning to wander aimlessly in circles. And that's the meaning of samsara. So all these beings are subject to their kama. They're at this point, at this moment of time, they're experiencing the results of their kama 
for good or for ill. There's a variation on this that um, I come across. It was actually in a talk by the Dalai Lama. He talked about developing upeka, one being at a time, and the contemplation that he suggested was different from the classical one. It is uh, this being just wants happiness, doesn't want suffering. And this applies to you know, all beings in, in the universe. They, they just want happiness, don't want suffering. But in, in any case, however you do it, the, the point is to recognize that aspect of beings which is universal, you know, that cuts through, is underneath all the differences. So uh, developing Brahma Viharas is uh, very beneficial. There's a list of uh, 18 benefits of developing metta, which could apply to the others as well. He is loved by human beings and by non-human beings. He sleeps easily, rises easily, and dreams no evil dreams. And when he comes to, to die, he dies peacefully and unconfused. So developing metta is an important part of a balanced practice. And if you if you have the defilement of uh, anger or ill will showing up, then it's good to do metta meditation. I have found over over the years in my experience that people who need to do metta meditation the most have resistance to it. They don't want to do it, and people who are naturally full of loving kindness. They love doing metta. They enjoy it. You know, it doesn't. It certainly doesn't do them any harm. Everybody can benefit from metta, but they don't really need it as so much. But they love doing it. They they get high on it. But the people who are full of anger or irritability, they have a real resistance to doing metta. And I think, not wholly, but in part. I blame it on the uh, the translation of calling it loving kindness. It sounds too, to a kind of a hard person. That sounds sort of soft and sappy, <laughs> loving kindness, you know. But if you call it benevolence or well wishing, it might be more appealing. But everybody should do some metta. It's very useful, very good. It's good to do it uh, if you um, are doing different practices during the day. Metta is very good to do in the evening before bed because of it, uh, that uh, benefit of, of sleeping easily, waking easily, and dream no evil dreams. It purifies the mind so there's no uh, nightmares. And I also would say by experience that um, he comes to be loved by, by uh, human beings and non-human beings that many people have found if they take up metta for a while, it not only affects their own being, but the way other people relate to them. You know, they, they, they end up receiving more kindness and let, you know, and it kind of disarms hostility and anger. You know, it's hard for anybody to get really angry or, or have ill will to someone who's full of metta. There's a lot of stories in in uh, in Thailand of um, monks who escape attacks from tigers and such by radiating metta, and then the tiger becomes peaceful. So I think that's a uh, that's enough. That's uh, some instruction in. Uh, Meditation on the Brahma Viharas.